IVF stimulation works on the natural female ovulation process. Three hormones are involved in a feedback loop. A small gland in the brain, called the pituitary, produces a hormone called FSH. FSH does two things. The first is it stimulates the ovary to produce estradiol, and the second to grow egg-containing follicles. When estrogen goes up, a second hormone is released by the brain. This hormone is LH, or luteinizing hormone. Artificial ovarian stimulation works by mimicking this natural process. We use injectable gonadotropins, usually FSH analogs such as gonal F, folistim, or brevel. Injections are started on the third day of the menstruation. On the average, 10 days of injections of FSH analogs will be necessary. Spontaneous ovulation is prevented by the use of GnRH antagonists, which are started on day six. On day 10, a trigger shot called HCG or Ovidrel is used to mature the eggs. The eggs will be released by 42 hours, but the retrieval occurs at about 34 hours. The eggs are retrieved using a transvaginal technique involving an ultrasound-guided needle piercing the vaginal wall to reach the ovaries. Through this needle, follicles can be aspirated and the eggs are floating in the fluid. It is common to remove between 6 and 20 eggs. The retrieval procedure takes about 20 minutes and it's usually done under anesthesia. The sperm and the eggs are incubated together at a ratio of about 75,000 to 1 in the culture. It's crowded here. I thought he called the number 48,237. In certain situations such as low sperm count or motility or abnormal sperm morphology, a single sperm may be injected directly into the egg using intracytoplasmatic sperm injection, also known as ICSI. 18 hours later, 60% of the eggs will be fertilized and the resulting embryos will show two pronuclei. By 48 hours, on day three, the embryo consists of six to eight cells. Sometimes doctors choose to grow them for two additional days. At this stage, on day five, the embryos are called blastocysts. A good quality blastocyst has the best chance of implanting. Prior to transfer, abnormal embryos are discarded. The number of embryos to be transferred depends on the number available, the age of the woman, and the quality of the embryos. For example, two perfect embryos are equal to three average embryos. Embryos are graded by the embryologist based on the degree of fragmentation the number of cells, and evenness of growth. An example of a perfect day three embryos would be a grade one eight cell. A perfect blastocyst would be graded as 4AA. Hey mom, I got a 4AA. Most clinics and country regulatory bodies seek to minimize the risk of multiple pregnancies. The final procedure is the embryo transfer. It does not require anesthesia. It is a very exciting and happy moment when the idea of having a baby starts to feel more real. The embryos judged to be the best are transferred to the patient's uterus through a thin plastic catheter, which goes through the vagina and the cervix. The first successful birth of a test tube baby, Louise Brown, occurred in 1978 in the United Kingdom. 3.5 million IVF babies have been born since then, and each year about 200,000 IVF babies are born worldwide.